Welcome everybody to the uh, Coastal Land Trust Little Lunch Lecture for Friday, September the 4th. We're glad that you have taken the chance to be with us today and uh, learn a little bit um, from LaVey. Before I introduce LaVey though, um, oh, welcome everybody on Facebook Live. Um, and also wanted to let everyone know that we are recording. And so um, if you want to leave your camera on, you can leave your camera on. Of course, we'd love to see your faces, but if you'd prefer not to have your likeness captured on a video, then you may turn your uh, video off. Uh, okay, as usual, just in case there are people here, I believe there are a few new folks um, that haven't joined before, but I wanted to let you know, we do ask everyone to keep your microphone on mute during the lecture. And then at the end, we'll have time for questions and you can unmute your microphone at that time and ask a question. Or if you would prefer, you may type it into the chat at any time. And then at the end, I will go back through the chat and read those out loud for, for LaVey. So either way, either way works. Um, there will be a couple of links in the chat also for you to check out just so you can stay in touch with us with email or becoming a member or renewing your membership. Um, so check that out um, over in the chat, oh, whichever way it is. Okay, um, today's speaker is LaVey Wallace Singleton, founder and executive director of the Veterans Employment Base Camp and Organic Garden in New Bern, North Carolina. LaVey is a veteran of the United States Navy, having served for 20 years as an air traffic controller. And an additional fun fact, LaVey also serves as a board member on the Coastal Land Trust Board of Directors. Um, thank you, LaVey, for being here today. We are excited to learn more about uh, Veterans Garden. And um, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And, um, as you read about our mission, I want to tell you a little bit about our organization. Um, we do have a wonderful connection with uh, the North Carolina Coastal Land Trust. Uh, we were established under them as our fiscal sponsor. Um, we have been so astonished uh, by how effective we've been able to operate due to that uh, foundational assistance. Uh, we've been operating for over seven years, and um, from what I was told, most uh, nonprofits that make it past two to three years are pretty much good to go. So um, I want to thank the Coastal Land Trust for, for their help, and uh, let's get into this. Okay, we knew that we wanted to assist veterans using agriculture, but as we grew into our role, we've begun to assist a variety of members of the military uh, community, including the active duty members that are transitioning from the military into farming. That photo is a presentation that I gave uh, because I saw a veteran with a sign like that. And I thought, wait a minute, we have to do something. And who better to reach back and help veterans other than a veteran, myself. So what we provide is services to all of the above, the active duty and uh, veterans, but so many more. We started by reaching out to the unemployed and homeless veterans. Then we expanded to members of the surrounding low income community. And finally, we went into providing youth agricultural activities. This last growth spurt that we had evolved into a youth farmer's market, which we were planning on launching this year, and as many people say, but COVID. So uh, we've delayed that until next year. But in the photos, you'll see, um, our main volunteer force, which is the uh, young single Marines. Now this gentleman on the uh, end here is not a young single Marine. Um, he is our mayor, Mayor Outlaw uh, of New Bern. Uh, we also have other single Marine photos 
And this photo below is of two female veterans who came out and had so much fun just pulling up sweet potatoes. We have partnered with the University of Mount Olive and North Carolina State University Farm School uh, under funding from the USDA to provide military participants with a six week series of classes on agricultural farm and ranch training. This has been part of our evolution as an organization. It's a pilot program that the USDA is using to find out what works for veteran farmer training and what does not. And as you can see in the photo, we've, we've had um, a really interactive time. This is pre-COVID now. Don't, don't think we're going out here doing this now. Uh, but pre-COVID, we were looking at anything from tractors that were built in the 1800s and how to use those to sprayers um, and how to lay down pesticides and also to fence building and what type of fence you should use for whatever you're trying to do. Okay. We have also been listed with um, First Lady Rosalind Carter's Monarch Butterfly Trail. Uh, right now we have a lot of uh, swallowtails and monarchs all over. Uh, we're hoping that they'll be able to find us because <laughs> we're planning on making a, a big move, but we may leave some flowers behind just in case. Uh, on the right photo, you'll see where uh, a lot of folks come out and think we have bat houses. They're not. Uh, they are butterfly houses and they're there to protect the butterflies from predators uh, when they're out there, because we do have a lot of uh, birds and things like that. We have some veterans that uh, just come out for tours to talk, to walk around and see what's growing. They also like to absorb the peace and quiet. And I mean, just looking at those photos, hopefully that's putting you in a relaxing kind of mood. But then there are also those who want to come out and swap war stories, which is completely fun. You know, we enjoy that too. Because of the surface that we have out there, which is an asphalt surface, we can support many of the mobility challenged uh, people that are able to come out. The, uh, the bottom left is a farmer who uh, has a wheelchair, but I mean, not a wheelchair, a mobile chair um, that goes on all terrains. Uh, another thing that we do or have been doing every year was hosting a military stand down which is an outreach primarily to homeless veterans, but it's open to all veterans. And pre-COVID, we had gotten up to having at least 200 veterans stop by for services, uh, for resources, all kinds of things. And we had, the last one we had, we had about 55 service providers attend, and they were all there just to let veterans know what they do and how they can help them. Okay, this part is the really fun part for me. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a girl and her toys. But um, I love having some of the dealerships and uh, equipment uh, vendors come out and you know, bring their new toys, latest toys, and have the veterans come out and see what they can do. What are the safety innovations? What are the new innovations that are coming out um, as far as agricultural equipment? And uh, yeah, I, I'm just as excited as uh, most of them. But I think it's important uh, for them to not feel that pressure of going in to see uh, the equipment, but also seeing it in action and what it can do. With everything that we do, we look at it from the perspective of our core values. 
uh, that's something that we got from the uh, Coastal Land Trust. Uh, our creativity, uh, does it challenge the thought process? Integrity, are we making the promised use of our grantor's resources and teamwork? Uh, are we building a cohesive structure that will bring uh, a lot of entities together for the purpose of assisting the veteran community. Um, in the photo, the top photo, this gentleman is a World War II veteran who worked in our greenhouse. Uh, and we may as well have labeled it his greenhouse because he was 84 years old. Some days he came in on a walker, but he was very proud of how he kept his greenhouse. <laughs> so, so you really had to, uh, you know, know when you came through the door, you talked to him first. Um, and below that is a tour that we did of the, um, oh goodness, I can't think of the, uh, the garden. But uh, anyway, we took the veterans out on a tour because I wanted them to see what they had in their local community and get them into exploring uh, the different gardens and things like that that are in the uh, local community. With an eye on the future, we are also looking at the up and coming young environmentalists. Especially, uh, we want to challenge some of their preconceived notions about nature. Uh, some of the children will come out and they're terrified of butterflies and, uh, or they're terrified of bees. And when you start talking to them about what the pollinators provide and how we really couldn't survive without a lot of the uh, fruits and vegetables that the pollinators help us with, uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, in the bottom left uh, photo, we had some young children come out on a tour from the rec center and everybody got to pull up their own radish and those poor little radishes they were taking them home because they said they were going to feed them to their parents and i thought oh my i might get in trouble for that but they were really really proud um in the photo next to that we have um some of our youth farmers market uh, attendees that are pulling off the seed heads from marigolds. Uh, they did that in the fall and we used those marigolds when we were planting this spring um, our tomatoes to help uh, against any insects or things like that. Sorry. Okay. And yes, along the way we have received a variety of community awards. Uh, that is in no way why we do this. Um, I'm out there sweating and uh, on online working on grants and things of that nature because I love, love, love what I do. But we have also experienced challenges like Hurricane Florence, Michael, Dorian, uh, and then COVID, boom. Uh, so this photo shows the water from uh, Hurricane Florence, and I don't know if you can see my arrow, but if you can, that little building, uh-oh, let me go back, sorry, clicked on it, that little building there is our greenhouse inside the swimming pool that used to be a recreation center site, so there we are with that kind of uh, challenge. So this is what, when we could get back to our site, this is what we were uh, met with. And I have to admit that when I first saw the garden, I cried. I was unsure how we could survive or if we would, uh, because there was a lot of devastation. Uh, that's our greenhouse and everything got pushed into it. Other things just imploded. Uh, it was a hot mess. So uh, that's when all of the relationships that we had built along the way kicked in. Um, 
the in this first photo over here this is the women marines association they came out to that greenhouse and pulled all of that stuff out of there and i mean they were at it and you can see how clean they've gotten it uh below down here this is the uh civitan organization um this lady here was in her 90s and she just wanted to do something i'm a i'm a member of the civitan uh they came out i got her a, a seat and she helped wash you know different uh items as they pulled them out that we knew we wanted to save and uh she would uh stack them up and organize them uh this gentleman here is a officer uh he's in the uh he's one of the board members of the american legion and that's probably the dirtiest he's been in a long time but he came out and he was cutting down trees for us uh these youth here are from promise place it's a organization for at-risk youth and they came out and all of the tools that were pulled out they um, cleaned them off and then they oiled them just to make sure that they would uh, not rust or anything of that nature okay and uh, i can't say enough about americorps if uh, you haven't experienced the youth that come out with uh, them wow you are missing a great organization uh they sent not one team but two one team came out and helped us with our uh, lockers which we use to hold equipment and a second team came out and helped us to build this hoop house which we needed to uh, protect our lockers so it was great all the way all the way around so one of the the key things that we have found is collaboration we uh have collaborations all over the place these are just a few of the events uh, and collaborators that we have worked with along the way uh, this is a photo from um, personnel from north carolina a and t uh, that came out from greensboro uh, we also had Keller Williams, the uh, real estate group. They, they came out with a, a little bit over 20 real estate agents, which was uh, funny uh, because these are people who are used to wearing suits and heels and fancy clothes. And uh, they were like kids in a candy store when it came to playing around with dirt and uh, bark and mulch and things like that. So we had a great time uh the other organization that i love is the girl scouts they come out every spring with uh, plants and flowers and plant uh in our garden of course they haven't been able to come out this spring because of COVID, but we're looking forward to having them on our new site uh the other group that we hosted was the north carolina coastal land trust and i searched through my files because i know we had photos from that day but I could not find them. But that was a blast as well. All right. So we also have a very active board of directors. These are uh, some of the members of our board of directors. And as you can see, from planting uh, to hosting uh, fundraising events to working on projects with out in the community to helping at the uh, garden itself. Uh, we're pretty much hands-on, which is really good because there's a lot of work to share. So then we thought that we were back on track. I mean, this was the site and how it was looking after the cleanup was done. Uh, we had produce that we were uh, growing. We were opening up our farmer's market. We were donating to um, the uh, women's shelter and other organizations. And then we found out that the uh, city of New Bern was closing down the rec center and well, relocating the rec center 
uh, because of the floodplain. And so we had a decision to make. Uh, and we decided, hey, we'll move too. So we're moving to this new site uh, and in New Bern, it's about maybe a couple of blocks away from our current site. And uh, we're, we're very excited, but it is going to be a Herculean uh, task. So this is our information. Uh, it has the new address. Uh, we will still have the same Facebook page, so you can get a chance to look at some of our moving uh, pictures. And also, if you'd like to connect uh, with us, uh, there's our website and also um, our phone number. We love to have volunteers, and when we open our farmer's market, we hope you'll come by. So I'll entertain any questions if we still have time. We have plenty of time for, for questions, but no problem. Um, I will start with one that came through the chat to me. Um, oh, uh, regarding the flood uh, during Florence, was were the waters um, fresh water or brackish? Um, like, did, did salt um, have any impacts on your soils? Okay, that was a great question. Um, we were, we were wondering about that as well. Um, and that was one of my first uh, uh, outreaches was, I went through Cooperative Extension uh, and said, how do I find out uh, about what happened with our soil? Uh, the good thing is Duke University keeps up with all kinds of contaminations and they do studies when we have floods they were able to tell me in the surrounding areas what came up, be it uh, petrochemicals or things of that nature. They also made recommendations. We had to go into all of our raised beds, pull the dirt out and replace it with new soil. Um, any of the in-ground beds, we put into cover crops with the uh, hope that the cover crops would pull whatever contaminants that we had in the soil out and then we pulled those plants out. So that's another thing that I'm really sorry about because we're <laughs> just now getting, getting that soil back. But um, every state has a university that looks at uh, contamination. So uh, anybody that's listening, if you have a, a curiosity about that and you're in another state, Find that university that deals with contaminants and, and things of that nature. We're, we're lucky that uh, Cooperative Extension was able to point me in the right direction. So hopefully that answers it. Um, I got another question in the chat. Um, where do you send your harvest? Um, a variety of places. We, we hold a farmer's market once a month on the third Saturday of the month. Right now, we're not doing that because of the move. Um, but we also uh, make donations to uh, various organizations uh, in the local community. We have the, um, uh, I'm trying to think, Vanceboro Christian Center. Uh, which we deliver donations to. Uh, we also deliver donations to the uh, women's shelter. And then we also have a, a homeless shelter here that we make donations to. Uh, we were also delivering to the senior center, but they're not running the programs that they used to run. So we have a variety of organizations that we are able to uh, donate to uh, on a weekly basis. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the relationship between the work of the Veterans Employment Base Camp and how participants in the program move toward gainful employment? Um, what's that process? Okay. Um, we run a six month internship for uh, disabled and homeless veterans that are looking for uh, employment. 
what we do is we take them into the program. We, uh, the first step is we start looking at their resume. We look at what type of employment uh, they're trying to find. We have a well-established uh, partnership with our local employment security uh, office. And so they even come in, review their applications, critique them. We hold mock interviews. Uh, we go out and we go to the different job sites. Um, and all of this was pre-COVID, keep in mind. Uh, a lot of the things that we were doing, we're not able to do right now. But I, I'm giving you what we were doing. Um, we also, if there are legal challenges that may, they may have, some, some of them have tickets and things of that nature. We have someone come in and do briefings on that. Uh, we try and help them with their military claims information. Uh, we make sure that they're enrolled in the VA healthcare system. Uh, also, they may need to upgrade their um, uh, their uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm having a brain lapse. Uh, if they got out of the military under uh, other than honorable discharge there may be the possibility that they can upgrade that. So we will help them with that as well. So it's kind of like, and we need, it, we need that six months because it's a holistic uh, look at what uh, the veteran needs. So hopefully that helps with that. Definitely. Um, back another curiosity about the Florence and how long did that cleanup take like from the first pictures of all the devastation to the beautiful everything's put back together about about how long was that understanding that you're of course still like dealing with some stuff yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> you know some things you try and black out okay <laughs> some are just too painful <laughs> Uh, and I'm sure there was a lot of folks that uh, went through Florence that uh, it was just uh, uh, one step at a time. Um, gosh, I'd say it took anywhere from six months to a year to really uh, get things straight. Uh, the, the immediate uh, three months was getting all of the debris off of the garden site and you know, uh, out so that the city could pick it up. And that, that literally took about three months. Um, and uh, then it was, how do we build back? And you know, how, what, what do we need? What do we not need to bring back? Uh, so that, that was another uh, three to four months. So I, I would say it, it has taken about a year. Um, we were really looking at coming back this year uh, uh, strongly, and we did with produce. We had beautiful produce this year, beautiful peaches, uh, blackberries. Oh my goodness, it, it has been wonderful. But we're moving, so <laughs> now we're kind of like starting again, but it won't be like starting from scratch. So we're, we're hoping that uh, We'll be able to get ourselves established in in the spring come back okay are there other questions that you would like to ask the audience um would you like to ask you can unmute your microphone and do so now if you'd like LeVay, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today and to, to share the story um, of your organization and the amazing work that you do. Um, it's just incredible to hear how successful you guys have been um, and given all of the challenges, like the normal challenges of starting a nonprofit, which are, which are nothing to, to sneeze at. And then all of the rest of it on top of it. Um, we are, we're proud of you and um, we really um, delight in your success and thank you um, for the work that you do for your community. 
Um, thank you for the uh, attendees that came today. We, we love having you as always. Um, please make sure to keep in touch with us. Uh, we do have uh, little lunch lectures every Friday at noon for the foreseeable um, because COVID. Um, <laughs> but you know what? We're, we're thinking that maybe we'll continue to do this anyway because this is a lot of fun and there is a lot to explore about the coastal plain of North Carolina. So please do continue to tune in with us on Fridays at noon. Um, next, next Friday, the Plastic Ocean Project will be with us to talk about um, why plastic is more than just a marine life threat. Um, and then on September the 18th, a, a student at UNCW will share her research about shore sparrows and the effects of sea level rise. And um, they, these little birds are the most adorable things you've ever seen. You should go check out the photo on our website at coastallandtrust.org slash events. Super cute. Um, so come to that and learn about those birds and sea level rise. Um, and let's see, that's, that's the next two weeks. You can check out the rest on the website. I won't read it all, but um, again, thank you everyone for being here today and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Lave. Thanks for having me. See you We're guys. We're so <laughs> glad to have you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Take care. All right, bye-bye.